if you look at my life at IFM, it's been totally directed by what my patients have taught me. I feel really fortunate to have found David. And it's different than many other relationships I've had in, with other physicians. And that what I gain is, when I'm in the room, David is present. And it's almost like nothing else matters. When a doctor shows concern for his patient, then you got a relationship going there. And that's a big deal. The earliest days of AFMCP, listening to the lectures, but realizing we had to see interconnections. I scribbled out on a piece of paper, six points initially, it became eight. And we were discussing, is this a tool that we can use to help us hear and see differently the patient's story? Most of us are here because this is a community, a tribe, a village, a group that feel that in our own individual practices, we're trying to create a type of medicine that has a more complete architecture that allows patients to be who they really are. And in that realness, you find answers that you can't find if you, if you pre-decide before you go into the room with the patient what the patient is going to get. I'm dealing with someone who's already been, um, is already a level of being jaded. They've, they've been unsuccessful. They feel like they haven't been heard. They're frustrated. And th those are just emotions besides being physically in pain and, and terribly afraid. I came in with um, having just lost my mother recently to um, early onset Alzheimer's disease. And that's a genetic um, disease that's passed down in the family, kind of 50-50. Um, and I watched my grandmother die of that disease, and I watched my mom's sister and brother die of that disease. And um, so I have faced the possibility of it being in my life. If we take the elegant science and reframe it to be useful, but to be useful because we let the patients tell us what part of that science can transform their life, that we listen to our patients in a way that everything that we learn as humans, as readers, as, as researchers, if we can use that in the service of what they really need, that's what they've taught me. So I came to David in the process of that journey and um, told him my story and shared a book that had been written about our family. And he came in in the next appointment with tears. And he had said that it had been a real disservice to my family and to me to have been told that you're doomed if you've got this genetics, this gene in your life, in your family. And the compassion that I felt, I just, he, I felt like he saw the, um, the urgency, the concern, the fear, and he got why it was there, but he, he brought in hope as well. I have to approach them, in my mind, just lovingly, just as a, as a person, as a person who wants to hear the story. And so we just talk about their history, what they've been sad about, what has failed them. And if they feel safe with me, that, that, that they can say negative things about previous experiences, that they can say how afraid they are or how scared they are, um, then we can sort of put that where it needs to be and then have a fresh look. The fascinating thing for me is that we've taken these ideas and it's always been the goal to help clinicians think in a different way. And we always need tools to change our pattern of thinking if we've learned a certain way. So what we've done in functional medicine is we've developed this, these tools. It's a timeline which allow us to really milepost the different important points that we understand in the patient's story and allows the patient to milepost their important points. 
And then we begin to see the interconnections. And that interconnections is where you begin to see the system's balance and imbalance that you draw from the timeline. And when we do that simple way of re-listening and retelling the story to the patient, to the person on the other side of my stethoscope, to the neighbor, to the family member, to the friend, to the stranger, there's often the moment of, that's exactly right. Aha, you have it. We have come to a place in our history where we're beginning to see what's delusional, what kind of research will be necessary to have a 21st century medicine. And what we've tried to construct here for you is a way of looking at that evidence so that you can get closer in probability to where the problem is. That's really all that we've tried to do, is to create an architecture that helps you understand the underlying causes and get away from the, the traditional 20th century reductionist organ system way of looking at medical care because it doesn't work. The idea of making an organ system diagnosis and giving a drug is the most simple-minded, stupid way to go about understanding why the person has the diagnosis. Our job, in my opinion, is to create a therapeutic relationship where healing can occur because the patient gets engaged in such a way that they can use these tools. And that it's not an issue of them complying with what we know. It's an issue of what's the engagement? How deeply can we understand one another that they actually begin to see that their life could be different? That that context of healing is giving them a moment where the veil pulls back for a second with the habits of their living and they see they could be somebody else. I met an emergency room doctor at one of a social gathering uh, at someone's home and I said, I'm David's wife and he said, well, you know, I don't really know David very well because really the story in the emergency room at Ashland Community Hospital is that we don't see his patients. Uh, we see, they, they are not frequent visitors to the emergency room. And he said, and he, he really needs to take that as a compliment because when we do see them, they come in, they know so much about their health, they never come in unless they absolutely have to, and they're so proactive from the moment they walk through the door. They're never needy. They're never uh, just waiting for some kind of diagnosis. Their questions are always from a place that we know they have been educated by their doctor. What happens isn't just in the room. It's a gift, I think, as humans we can give to each other. It doesn't have to be physician, patient. It's just person to person, which is, I see you, I trust you, and keep going. I have hope for you. And that's a gift that's not about my medical state. It's about me as a person and how that ripples into my life. It goes into all different areas. I'm so grateful. It was always about what will work that my patients have taught me. What always worked was creating an environment of listening, an environment of caring, an environment of compassion, an environment that used science as a tool, that didn't try to use science as a certainty, that science was an incredible way to increase the possibilities, probabilities, and the chances that you might hit close to a sweet spot. It works because what emerges from the uncertainties and multifactorial events in people's life are intuitions, are pattern recognition. And you put that together with what we know from functional medicine and what they know about themselves, voila, miracle.